Law School celebrates a 50 establishes endowment fund. I don't, I'm not accepting that. Three former students of the Faculty of Law, University of Lagos, write memoir in honor of the former deans of the faculty. And the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies educates on Creative Commons licensing in the digital environment. That's the lineup for today, and this is Law Weekly on Channels Television. I am Shola Sheeli. Today, the program is dwelling within the academic setting where there's so much knowledge to be gained. We'll get to it in a bit, but let's start off with some of the top stories from the courts. We begin in Abuja, where the Federal High Court has fixed the 23rd of December to deliver judgment in a suit which is seeking to declare as illegal the deduction of security vote from the statutory allocations of state government by governors. Justice Adamo Bailo fixed the date after parties in the suit readopted their written addresses last week Wednesday. The judge who had postponed the judgment on a number of occasions assured the parties of his readiness to settle the matter before embarking on his retirement on December the 31st. A human rights lawyer, Chief Nkere Nwem Akwan, had dragged the 36 state governors, as well as the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, before the court to challenge the legality of the security vote deductions. The plaintiff asked the court to order the state governors and the FCT minister to return to the Treasury all sums they had already deducted and collected as security votes. He also asked the court to declare that the EFCC and the ICPC were in breach of their statutory mandate for failing or neglecting to investigate the security vote deductions made by the state governors and the FCT minister. He wants the court to order the EFCC and ICPC to immediately commence investigations into the security vote deductions and prosecute the governors and the FCT minister. Staying at the Federal High Court, Abuja, last week Friday, the court ordered the federal government to close its case against four persons charged for the bombing of the United Nations building in Abuja. The accused persons, Salisu Mohammed, Enusa Mukailu, Danzumi Haruna and Abdusalami Adamu are facing a four-count terrorism charge over their alleged role in the August 20, 2011 bomb attack, which claimed about 23 lives. The case has suffered a series of adjournments at the instance of the prosecution on last week Friday after the federal government's prosecuting team once more failed to produce its witnesses in court. The trial judge, Justice Gladys Olotu, who had apparently run out of patience, ordered the prosecution to close its case. Justice Olotu expressed disappointment at the shoddy manner the federal government's legal team went about prosecuting the suspects even after applying for accelerated hearing during the arraignment. With this development, the case may be coming to an abrupt end. In Lagos, another trial is just picking up steam as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission last week Thursday commenced the trial of the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Adeyemi Kufuriji, and his personal assistant, one Oyebodi Atoyebi. Both men were arraigned before the Federal High Court Lagos on a 54-count charge of money laundering. The EFCC had alleged that the duel conspired between April 2010 and July 2011 to commit an illegal act of accepting cash payments amounting to over 273 million naira from the Lagos State House of Assembly without going through a financial institution. The first prosecution witness, Mr. Adebayo Adedeji, an investigating police officer with the EFCC, has told the court presided over by Justice Ibrahim Buba that the Commission's investigations revealed that Honorable Ikuforiji received cash payments from the account section of the Lagos State House of Assembly about 57 times. Cash sums were above the threshold stipulated by the Money Laundering Act. The court then received as exhibits four cash registers of the House as well as statements made by the accused persons and some other members of the House. Trial continues on the 2nd of December.
The Lagos High Court, sitting in Igbushere in Lagos Island, last week Wednesday conducted a trial within trial to determine the voluntariness of the confessional statements made by the first and second defendants in the murder of the late Cynthia Osokogu. 34-year-old Okumo Nwabufu and his cousin, 24-year-old Olisai Loka Ezeke, are charged with the murder of the 25-year-old postgraduate student of the Nasarawa State University, who was allegedly drugged and murdered in a hotel room in the Amu Ward of the area of Festec Town in Lagos in July 2012. Two other persons, a pharmacist, Oji Osita and Nonso Ezeke, are also facing charges alongside the initial two. The pharmacist reportedly saw the suspects the drug administered on her while the fourth defendant was charged with possession of some of the properties of the late Cynthia, including her BlackBerry phone. In the trial within trial, the first and second defendants narrated to the court how they were beaten, tortured, and induced by the police to confess to the crime. They claimed that the torture was done by the policeman and area commander of the First Act Police Division. Presiding Justice Olabisi Akilade has asked lawyers in the matter to file their written addresses on the trial within trial before the court proceeds on the Christmas vacation on December the 20th. She then adjourned till the 13th of January for adoption of the written briefs and possibly a ruling. Welcome back. The Nigerian Law School was established pursuant to the Legal Education Act of 1962. The school opened its doors to its first set of students on the 2nd of January 1963. Last week, the law school rolled out the drums in celebration of its 50 years of establishment. The Council of Legal Education, led by former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, OCJ Okocha, and the administrators of the school, led by the outgoing Director General of the Nigerian Law School, Dr. Tahim Maman, hosted the Governor of Lagos, judges, members of the Body of Benches, senior advocates of Nigeria, other lawyers, and even the lawyers in equity, as the present students were called. Former President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Chief Wale Olani Pekun, who chaired the event, was the first to put the celebration in perspective. I was looking at the list of justices of the Supreme Court, from the Chief Justice to the newest of them. All of them attended the Nigerian Law School. This school has cheapened the landmark of this country positively. In a crime where you don't have lawyers, you have ruffians. Law is to nature and is to our own country and humanity what oxygen is to mankind. We are rolling out the drums to beat our chests for what this call has attained. Mine is to make a few opening remarks, but I won't go to take my seat without appealing to government to come to the aid to the assistance of the Nigerian Law School. I've gone through the niece list of the Nigerian Law School, Lagos campus, hostels that were started, to the best of my knowledge, information and belief, when Chief Richard Akinide was the Attorney General and Minister of Justice between 1980 and 1983. The hostels are there. They are yet to be completed. State of neglect. All of us have sat here one time or the other, but we have to come to join hands to them or with them to bail out our alma mater. More so, when the government of the day appears not to be too much interested in the legal profession. It was just here I was saying, what do we do? He said, the first thing we do kill all the lawyers. No government likes lawyers, with the exception of governments headed by lawyers. And we look forward to the day, may that day come soon, when we have a lawyer as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
The Director General of the Lagos Campus, Mr. Tone Adebiyi, was quick to reel out the needs of the campus. We need to change the mosquito netting. We don't want our students being struck down every time with malaria. We need to change the mosquito netting in all the rooms. We have 245 rooms. And each room actually is only 5,000 Naira. Then we have serious electricity problem. We have electricity maybe two hours a day. And the students need electricity, you know, more like 12 hours a day, if not 24 hours a day. And we've said, okay, let's buy inverters for them. If anyone here needed convincing on whether to assist with the need, the anniversary lecture dispelled the doubt. A couple of home truths that we need to tell ourselves and abide by to be able to take legal education to greater heights. One fundamental truth is that education has a cost that somebody must bear. And it's not said with nonchalance. All I'm saying is that somebody has to write the check for education. Secondly, legal education needs in the 60s and 80s cannot be the same in 2013. From a few students then to so many from three months program to so many more months. And the entire law school then wasn't up to a third of this hallowed chambers. And so a lot has changed. Thirdly, the economy, the GDP size of a country, somewhat determines the level of commerce and by implication the need for lawyers and recourse to the judicial process. You would observe that uh, our judges in Lagos work tirelessly, I, I would dare say, much more than their counterparts in states that do not have the same level of commerce. So facilities, class size, you would then have to talk to a classroom of a thousand people. And the environment mean that law and the practice of the profession has changed significantly from what it was in the early days. Let me pause at this point and commend the Nigerian Law School, the Council of Legal Education, for this great initiative. This initiative for me is not just about celebrating the 50th anniversary. It is about kickstarting something that would snowball into huge success. What do I mean by that? All over the world, alumni fund approximately 30% of the university. Alumni includes the past participants for short programs and those who have obtained some degree or the other. The $20 billion Harvard University Endowment Fund is a testimony to this. One third funded by endowments from alumni. Why does this happen? First of all, there's an emotional connect. You do not want to see the institution go down. Secondly, there's also a personal tragedy that your brand disappears if the school you went to becomes disaccredited or simply goes under. Your own brand goes with it. So it's a tragedy of commons of some sort. From the reviewed needs list on the Lagos campus, the number here is about 61.625 million. 61 million 625,000 is what we have to address here. So in the spirit of do something, I am going to take one third. The aluminum bunk beds and all of that coming to roughly about 20.58 million, approximating about one third of 61 point something million. The government of Lagos State will rustle up that money officially and amongst, amongst our colleagues who are also lawyers in the State Executive Council. Somehow, somehow, we will, we will come through and we will do it within the law.